All eyes on the Western Caribbean as we move into the early part of next week. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're going to talk about that area in the Western Caribbean. The environment is favorable, but where is it headed? There are some big-time differences in scenarios. We're going to break down the science and meteorology of what is actually going to steer this thing later in the week. That will determine where it goes, so stick around for that. Also, we're going to break down some of the ensembles that are plastered all over social media. The ensembles are what you want to be looking at at this stage in the game, not in the individual model runs. I will show you the difference in that coming up. Also, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to blow your mind and talk about where that steering piece that's eventually going to lift this thing up and out of the Western Caribbean currently is. It is very, very far away from where it's actually going to do work eventually as we get into next week. Before we get into the video, if you like talking about the weather, if you want to stay up to date on the weather without some of the garbage that's out there on social media, you come to the right place we like to have the weather conversation in this growing weather community so thank you guys a ton for all the new subscribers and for being here all right here it is we had the video yesterday and then later yesterday evening the hurricane center officially highlighted the area so this is their yellow blob still less than a 40 percent shot for development over the next seven days but that is going to be the area that we are watching again there's no storm out there now that's why nobody is going to be able to tell you where the storm is going at this stage in the game because we physically do not have a storm and we likely won't until we get in towards the latter stages of Sunday, maybe even into parts of Monday. So again, there's still a long time to watch this come into fruition as we sit here on Wednesday, September 18th. All right, so just quickly here, we're going to talk about the actual mechanism that will be responsible for sending it west or sending it to the east coming up in just one second. But I just wanted to kind of ballpark the two big scenarios and the camps that I will show you in the ensemble forecast. So our potential tropical disturbance as we get into Sunday and Monday, early Tuesday, going to be right about in there, and it's going to try to consolidate. Now, this is going to be the one trend to watch. If you are a fan of watching the models, if you start to see things trending further north, maybe to the North Gulf Coast or maybe even west, closer to western Louisiana or Texas, that means that the models are going to be biting on a slower formation of this entity. That's going to help to drive it west, follow the low-level circulation of the Central American gyre, and then be pulled back towards the western Gulf of Mexico. The other camp, again, the ensembles are going to be split on this, is this thing gets out into the western Caribbean, the piece of the Central American gyre, it consolidates faster, it's going to feel the tug of our main steering influence faster, and then want to inch to impact the Eastern Caribbean. So that means that'll put Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, the Bahamas more in play. So here's how this could shake out. This is going to be the GFS model, and the GFS might be a little bit too fast, too aggressive with developing the thing. The Euro might be a little bit on the slower side. We might have that Goldilocks scenario where it's in between the two right now, but there's a lot of time to watch. I'll show you what I'm talking about and where, the, where this piece is that I'm going to break down currently is. So here we go. This is Sunday, 7 o'clock, and I'm going to mention the date here. Let me pull up the handy-dandy calendar as we get into Sunday. This is Sunday, September 22nd for anybody watching. Again, just to make clear what days we're talking about, I want to kind of point out that you see this isobar here, this height line, I should say. Um, this broad area of low pressure starts to develop toward Central America, the Yucatan. This is the greater Central American gyre coming into fruition, that semi-permanent area of low pressure. Watch what happens as we gradually move towards Monday into Tuesday. You're going to notice a little ball start to pop up. This is our area of low pressure, the mean sea level pressure beginning to drop and starting to organize, meaning we have a little bit of strengthening going on. Now, this is on Tuesday, so we're still talking six days from this recording on September 18th. There's a lot of time here that models are going to be run without there being an actual storm around. So please, please, please be careful when you look at these individual model runs. They are not going to have a good handle on this situation, not only because there's no storm, but because of where our steering current currently is. Stick around. I keep on saying that, but I, I promise it's going to be cool, and I'm going to show you where exactly where this thing is. The other thing is, here's our dip in the jet stream, and this is this is the entity, this little dip, that is going to help to start anyway 
lifting, whatever this becomes, and again, the strength still very much in question as well, uh, lift it to the north. You're going to also notice this little orange area start to pop up east of Florida. We have an upper high, and if this gets strong enough, this is going to help to also eject it into the Gulf and then maybe yank it to the east. So you see this blue and green area on, on your screen. That's going to be the storm itself. We're going to be watching this entity near Chicago and St. Louis that drop out of color there. That's our dip in the jet stream. And then that upper high, and at least the GFS, because it's strengthening it a little bit faster, it feels the influence of the upper level pieces. And it may split the difference and try to come in towards the big bend of Florida and then move up the East Coast. That would be what the GFS argues for. But are those pieces going to be there a week from today? And how strong is our storm going to be? Because again, a weaker system like the Euro would suggest it's going to feel the low level steering currents, which would try to pull it across the Yucatan in favor, maybe the northern and maybe northwestern Gulf Coast toward Texas. I'm going to show you some of those uh, models and ensembles coming up in just one second. Hey, before we get into where this steering pieces this dip in the jet stream is right now if you have found this informative do me a favor hit this uh, thumbs up button also i'd love to know where you're tuning in from and if you have any questions please post them in the comments this channel was born to combat some of the hype and the craziness that's out there uh and i really do take the time to go through the comments and answer questions. There were some people that were going on a cruise that were interested. Uh, there were some people that were uh, in hurricane-prone areas and really are have been hit by hurricanes a lot over the past few years, concerned, and we were giving them the best information that we can. So I really do take the time to answer the comments. It's what I like most about this channel, and I like to combat some of the fear factor that is out there on social media with sound science and meteorology. Of course, I'm a meteorologist, so I really, really do like getting into the nitty gritty, and I like when these things stay out at sea, of course, um, but that is gonna be the GFS rendition. All right, so we are looking at the water vapor imagery, and we are taking a trip way to the west and northwest. So you can impress your friends if you're talking about the tropics, and I know a lot of my fellow weather nerds will gonna, are gonna be doing that. It's way up in Russia right now. So this thing is not even being sampled by the United States Upper Air Network, the balloon launches that we do to sample uh, the data and to put into the computer model. So for reference, here is Alaska, okay? That's Alaska right there. And let me back this up so all my circles match up. That spin you see there is coming off the coast of Russia. So we do not have any kind of good data, not only from the storm itself, because we don't have a storm, and we won't have a storm for the next couple of days. And that thing is way out off the coast of Russia, not even being able to be sampled by the United States Upper Air Network, the balloon launches, to be put into our models. So garbage in, garbage out, I always say. Um, so we have to look at the larger picture right now. It's going to be impossible to tell where exactly this thing is going. We're going to continue to watch the ensembles, which I'm going to show you, uh, some of those in just one second. Um, but the, the biggest thing is, is to just realize that the Western Caribbean is a, going to be a very favorable place for development. We have a help from the MJO to get things going. So that's going to be some of the, uh, the things that kind of the what we know, what we don't know. All right, on to the actual ensemble. So we're going to start with the European ensemble. And essentially, well, what it is right here, the darker the yellow, the more members, the more confidence that those members are, are kind of going towards. So all those different red numbers you see are the actual pressure of this system. And then when you see the, uh, the yellow start to get darker and turn to orange, that's where we have more of a consensus of the of the members of the ensemble remember each member of the ensemble has different initial conditions put into it it's when we don't have a lot of data which we do not because the reasons we just mentioned to the video but um it helps to give us a range of solutions so that we can know okay if it's weaker it's going west if it's stronger and consolidates faster it's going to the east so at least we know that and we can follow those trends through the weekend. So that's at least, that's going to be our homework assignment through the weekend is, okay, what are the ensembles trending? Where is that piece? How is our balloon launch or how are our balloon launches 
sampling that upper that upper trough, that spin that we just saw off the coast of Russia. So here we go. This is going to be on Friday, September 27th. And you see we have an idea north of the Yucatan, an idea uh, east of the Yucatan, still in the Caribbean. And then you're going to notice kind of the divergence here. We have some members suggesting a weak system and it getting yanked back over the Yucatan and maybe towards eastern Texas or western Louisiana. Or we have the solution here, which is east of Louisiana, uh, closer to Florida, putting Florida in direct impacts. Again, that is the, un that is the two wide uh, ideas there. And again, I think it's important to show models with content, uh, context as we did before as I go on like a little rambly tangent here. Um, but I want you guys to know kind of what we're working on as meteorologists behind the scenes. And if you want to kind of track this on your own and, and with us uh, as well, to know what we're going to be looking for over the next couple of days and getting into the weekend uh, of how, how that behaves. All right. So this is the GFS ensembles, and I showed you before that the GFS is a little more aggressive initially, and you clearly see the brighter yellow signal and more consolidation in the Western Caribbean. And then you see a much bigger grouping through Western Cuba and then into Florida. We do have a few members out here. We have a few members that are slower, and you see a result, the slower consolidation, it misses that upper trough. We get some of them arguing to go a little bit further west, so that's why it's important. If it consolidates slow, it's going to miss its ride to the east, and it's going to be able to lift gradually to the north and to the west. It's more time over water, of course, so we don't want want that. But unfortunately, as we all know, if we do get a storm to develop, and that does look likely, somebody is going to get the storm. And that's the unfortunate part about these storms getting going in the Western Caribbean. Land is going to be affected. There's no way out unless it had eyes and went through like this and went out through the Florida Straits, which is, that would take a miracle and still impacts would be, uh, would be around. Um, but you clearly see here the GFS is arguing for a Western Cuba and then a Florida strike. This is going to be Thursday into Friday, uh, September 26th into the 27th, maybe starting Wednesday night, the 25th. So that is the GFS representation. I want to show you a straight-up model. Uh, the ICON model has been doing very well this season. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to show you guys what it's doing. This is through its full run now. This is going to be through Wednesday, September 25th. It is a little slower. Remember, the GFS ensembles, we're talking about this thing closing in on landfall to Florida. So it's in the camp, the icon, of a slower developing storm. And that is why you have the L, the center of the storm, out here north of the Yucatan, whereas the GFS wanted over western Cuba, uh, closer to the dry Tortugas and Key West. Um, so that's going to be an interesting note and something to follow as well. These red lines here, this is going to be our thickness line. So that's our dip in the jet stream here. And then this is our big upper, or our big surface low pressure and a cold front. So with the icon, and it only goes out to... Um, to 180 hours, so we're only going out to Wednesday, September 25th in the evening. But what this would suggest is then this cold front would then kick it to the east, uh, maybe toward the Florida Panhandle, maybe to the Big Bend. It would be a very, very sharp turn uh, to the Gulf Coast of Florida. And I know, believe me, that the, the PTSD is there from Ian and further back, Charlie, with a, a storm lifting north, and then just cutting across last moment. When you have these cold fronts like this, um, that's something that we watch for. If that were to happen, you would likely have the storm maybe closer over to here. That'd be a really hard button hook uh, to hit southwest Florida. That would almost have to go due east. But nonetheless, it's something that we're watching. Another thing that's getting a lot of play is the Euro AI model. Um, and this thing is way west. It did good with Francine. That's what you're going to hear a lot of on social media. Um, and it did, but it also forecast Francine to blow up in the Central Caribbean, which it didn't. It had the storm, it had the storm, and then dropped out. It didn't do that great with uh, Ernesto either. It's a work in progress, and what it's doing, it's trying to kind of learn the pattern 
and use some climatology and see where this thing could go. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, almost like your chat GPT of a, of a weather model or like that. It's, it's putting, okay, here's, here's the data that we're getting. Okay. Do with it what you will model. And, and this is what it's, it's kind of spitting out here. And this is going to be on, on the 28th. So you do see it kind of lifting, uh, towards Texas and Louisiana. Now that is, a, that is an outlier. Um, the actual Euro, if you wanted to see that real quick, the, the parent Euro is also way over here, but it's also a strung out weak mess. Okay. So the, the Euro AI wants to wrap it up into this big hurricane. Um, but the Euro itself is a string bean, a little bit of a bunch of slop coming through. Uh, that's obviously best case scenario would love that. We don't want any more rain in this area. We had a lot of rain um, in parts of Texas and Louisiana, so we don't want any more rain to flood. But when you're talking about that or a major hurricane, we're going to take that all day. And again, that is just one solution. That is why at this stage of the game, you can't base anything off of that. You have to look at the ensembles. And again, the ensembles suggest that we do, this is the European ensembles again, um, that eastern range uh, to Florida or way west as its parent run would suggest as well. So there's still a lot of time to watch. And unfortunately, there, we're not going to know a ton through the weekend, but at least we have some trends to look at. And that's what I wanted to share with you today, some of the things that we're working on uh, behind the scenes. And uh, just to have this weather conversation with you guys, that's what I love about this channel the most, the conversation to get to have in the comments. I really do take the time to look at them. So uh, please post in the comments where you're tuning in from. Let me know if this is the first time you found the channel. If you liked it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I always love to hear what the weather is doing, where you're tuning in from as well. So you can post that in the comments and uh, help us grow the awesome weather community of non-sensationalization if that's even a word. Look, I said that the hurricane season was going to explode yesterday, and I do believe it will. Um, as we get into the month of October, some of the things that were holding it back from a, a ridiculous season, and to go on like a, a tangent real quick um, about that, we obviously don't want storms, so let me be clear about that first. But if some of these unforeseen things weren't in play we would have had that ridiculous season that was forecast. And I know if is a big if, um, but I made the analogy before. Um, if you guys, sports fans, um, the Eagles lost on Monday Night Football. Okay, I, everybody picked. Everybody picked the Eagles to win that game. Um, they should have won that game. But Saquon Barkley dropped the ball, and it gave them a chance. And that analogy, what I'm trying to make is, even if you have the upper hand on offensive line, even if you have the upper hand in some of the weapons, in the quarterback, and things like that, you still have to play the game. And this is the game that we're playing. There are things that really can't be forecast when those seasonal forecasts come out in May, in June. Um... And uh, this hurricane season is no doubt going to be studied. It's likely, I think one of the biggest reasons is you need to force up an area of thunderstorms in the tropics to get things going. When the Atlantic is so warm, you're really not consolidating thunderstorms. Again, which is a good thing. But now as we cool the sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic because we're heading into fall and La Nina is crashing right now, that's going to help to focus convection thunderstorms east of the Lesser Antilles, off of Africa, and then into the Caribbean. So those are a few of the reasons why. Um, and we're going to have help from the MJO. Big MJO signal coming in, unfortunately. And that is like an extra, that puts the thunderstorms on steroids. It helps, it's a shot in the arm to get thunderstorms going. And then given a moist, I know everybody hates that word, environment, that's when we get things rolling. All right, so that was my little rant at the end. If you found this helpful, please hit that thumbs up button for me. Uh, consider subscribing. Would love to have you guys on board and join the team. I would appreciate it. Great seeing all of you all the time. We'll catch you soon. We'll keep you updated, again, with sound science and meteorology. We'll catch you soon, guys. Have a good one.